Today, I share the process of making Jiri style 3D cloud in Blender 4.0. The shader in this tutorial was used in our short animation film, Papiwa, which is 100% procedural and not needing any image or resources. There are a couple of tutorials with similar goals on YouTube we also watched before making the animation. Especially, I recommend you watch the video from Writing Boy Studios first, which helped a lot. Their cloud tutorial is still useful even though it's been around for 3 years. This is the final output we're gonna make. Everything is procedural and customizable. And sure, it's made of a lot of nodes, I know. It may look horrifying or confusing, especially if you are new to Blender. So, here's a simple explanation about shader nodes. I created these nodes to represent the color of the clouds. But if you look closely, you will notice one repeated pattern. No matter how many nodes you use in shader nodes, they need to come together somewhere. Usually, we do this math nodes, mixed color nodes, all vector math nodes. Let's just call them mix nodes. The way node mix is similar to stacking layers. If you ever used Photoshop or Procreate, you may be familiar with the concept of the layer system. In Blender shade nodes, you can do things you've done with layers by mix nodes. For instance, with the mixed color nodes, you will find options that bring to mind the settings you see in Photoshop. Now let's give it a try and see how it works. First, let's create a plan. Shift A to add a mesh plan. Press Alt, X, type in 90 to rotate and go to the edit mode, press U to unwrap. By pressing numpad 5, you can change our view to orthographic. Now let's move to the shader editor. Add a new material and delete the principal BSDF. Shift A, Gradient Texture, and Ctrl T to Mapping. Now set Gradient Type to Spherical. Plug Object to Vector. Press S to Scale and type in 10. Next, we will create Virtual Cube by Array Modifier. Move to the Modifier menu, add Modifier, Generate Array. And change Relative to Contrast Offset. Type 0 and Distance X. Type in 10 in count and 0.15 in Z value. Now apply the modifier and align the origin point to the center of the object. Now you can see that the gradient texture looks like a virtual sphere. Okay, back to the shader editor. Create mix shader, add transparent VSDF and emission shader. Connect the transparent to the top image to the bottom, and color to the factor. Now if you preview this material, the black areas will not get transparent. So move to the material setting, change the blend mode to all per hash it, and shadow mode to all per hash it as well. Now the vazio of fake volumetric setup is complete. If you look at the reference image here, you can notice that the irregular noise at the edges, what makes the clouds looks realistic. We can do it by mixing textures more. Texture nodes literally generate textures, and some of them do it procedurally. For example, noise textures, foronoid textures, moosegrave textures, and more. Each of these nodes has sliders to control options like scale, detail, and randomness. One thing to keep in mind, unlike textural images, generating textures means creating values by certain rules were set with no limits. So, we need to set the range of the textures to be generated. In this case, we are combining a noise texture with a gradient texture. The sprinkle style gradient textures defines the range. By adjusting the options in the mixed color nodes, we can get only the intersection between two inputs. Press Shift A to create moose grave texture. Ctrl T to mapping. If you preview this shader, the moose grave texture will look like this. As we want to get this kind of bumpy outline for our clouds, we'll blend the moose grave texture with the spherical texture. So copy this gradient texture and add mixed color nodes. Plug A to A and color to B. And then set the blending option to the linear light. If you pull the factor up to 1 and then check the object, 
The texture looks like this. Let's go to the edit mode. And press H to hide 4 or 5 faces. Now we can see the texture properly. Should look more like clouds when you adjust the value of factor. And add color ramp between each texture. We can control how much they mix. Also, we can change the scale and detail of the moose grave. Now, copy this linear light and plug the previous gradient to be input and result to factor of mix nodes. Then, Ctrl Shift click the mix shader. Okay, let's make more conflict texture by adding another texture here. The clouds in the reference both have a large and small noise, which makes it more natural. So, add the noise texture here. Plug the same vector that moose grave is using. Copy color lamp and Ctrl T click to preview. Now, you can adjust the scale and detail to make the noise smaller and more jacked. We'll mix this linear light again with the gradient texture we used to represent the fake volumetric. Copy the linear light, plug the noise texture to A, plug the result to B, and connect this result to here. Now Ctrl Shift Mouse 1 and preview the material. This creates a more detailed cloud shape. You can play around the scale and detail of the noise texture to get the exact look you want. Now, Ctrl J to insert new frames. Let's call these parts as procedural noise. And here, as spherical. Next, let's add some colors to the cloud. First, delete this emission node and add a color lamp. By clicking on the levels of the color lamp, you can add the colors of your choice. Go to viewport, shift A, add the sunlight and rotate it. Got random modes, but this material does not respond to the lighting yet. So back to shadow editor. Add diffuse nodes, plug to factor of color lamp. The results of diffuse VSDF can't be directly connected to a color lamp because it's a shader. So add a shader to RGB between the color lamp and diffuse node. Adjust my color lamp and light. Now it works. Next, we'll add a normal map. Usually, use image textures like these as normal maps. You can learn how to create this normal map image in the Creating Clouds course by Lightning Boy Studios. However, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to procedurally generate and control this normal texture. First, we needed to understand normal maps. This image texture is flat but react to light as if it were a three-dimensional object. It's because the RGB values in the normal map contain information about the X, Y, Z axis. Red for X, green for Y, and blue for Z. This is why normal maps have these strange colors. So, if we could simulate these unusual colors, it means we can create a normal map procedurally. If we create the pattern we want with a texture node, and replace the RGBs like a normal map. Wouldn't it work as a procedural normal? Let's give it a shot. Shift A, combine X, Y, Z. Make two copies of them. First type in 1 to X value, then in Y and Z. We can check that X prints as red, Y as green, and Z as blue, which is RGB. We will create basic parts of normal map by mixing these RGB values. Now add separate X, Y, Z and texture coordinate. Plug UV to vector. Check the gradation by repeating Ctrl Shift click. Now we will mix this gradation with RGB. Add map range, plug X to value. If you change the values of minimum, you can control the dark area. Type minus 1 into minimum. Now it splits exactly in half. Copy this map range nodes. This time, plug Y to value. We are going to mix these two nodes into red and green. Add vector math, set to scale, red to vector, result to scale. Repeat this to green. Copy this scale nodes. Again, green to vector, result to scale. Now mix the result of these two nodes. Add vector math nodes, this to here and this to here. Finally, mix with blue texture. Copy this set nodes, plug two inputs. 
Now we get the colors are very similar to the normal map. Now we are going to add a bumpy texture here, like this one. Add Voronoi texture. By previewing this material, we can create an irregular bumpy texture by changing the value of randomness. Don't forget, change dimensions to 40 and set to smooth that one. Now the edges get smoother if you increase the value of smoothness in the Voronoi texture. However, from the blended version 4.0, adjusting this factor makes the shader heavier. I don't know why, but I'll show you an easy way to fix it. We will blend this into the normal map we created before. Plug this factor to here. Add back the math. Set to subtract. Plug same vector to here. Plug position of Voronoi to here. Ctrl Shift click to preview. Change smoothness factor to zero and add white noise texture, texture coordinate and UV to vector. If you preview the color of this texture, you can literally see the color noise. Add map range, change data type, float to vector, plug color to vector. And such a value node connected to minimum and type in -1, we'll find out that there's some dark color noise in the preview. Let's mix it with this texture. Shift A, add mix color nodes. Map range it to B. If we adjust the factor of the mixed color nodes, we can see that it works like a smoothness factor. Alright, it's almost done. Create a mix nodes in front of subtract. Set vector, plug this vector to A and this to B. Ctrl Shift click to preview. By adjusting the factor, you can control the contrast. Create a map range nodes in front of mix nodes. Set vector, add value and connect it to minimum. And change the value to minus 0.4. Then if you add normal map nodes and connect to diffuse BSDF, it works just like a normal map. Our plan cloud responds to lighting and we can freely control the scale and smoothness of the texture. Additionally, if we add the scale nodes between the subtract nodes and mix nodes, we can control the amount of bump like a normal texture. Now let's add some detail. The clouds used in Huapiwa also use the same procedural normal, but the regular pattern make them look much more natural. Start by adding a noise texture. Ctrl T to mapping. Connect to cover ramp. Increase the contrast slightly. We're going to mix this noise texture with this red green gradient texture. So let's move some nodes around. Add mix color node here and plug vector of this to A, then plug color of noise texture to B. And change the values to 0. Ctrl Shift click my mix shader to preview. Then, by adjusting the value of the mix color node, the noise texture is blended and the normal map changes. We can adjust the value, scale, or color ramp of the pre-made normal map to make it look like a painting. Okay, so you've got the normal map you want. Now let's call these parts as procedural normal. Let's make them change shape as we move the origin point. Move it to procedural noise. If I play with my mapping node here, the location values can change the shape. We can add object info. Plug location to location. Now the shape will change every time you transform this. Add math nodes here. Set to multiply, type in 0.05. By adjusting the flow here, you can control how much the clouds change. Let's copy these nodes and place them on the procedural normal area. Connect the same value 
for multiply to the mapping nodes of the noise texture. However, when I copy the clouds from EV render, they don't render properly like this. I checked several YouTube and it seems to be a bug. This can be solved by placing the clouds of Zex as non overlapping as possible. Now, let's add a little more detail to the outline. One of our goals in making Wabiwa was to recreate those classic 2D animation styles with 3D assets in Blender. And of course, we wanted the clouds to have the same feel. If you look closely at the clouds in the Zebra animations, the edges are a bit darker and blurred. This outline is a sort of after image that was created when the animators were shooting by physically stacking clouds and sky paintings. We wanted to keep these unintentional details even though we can't see them anymore in animations created by digital tools. We'll put the nodes here next to the procedural noise. Add noise texture, color ramp, and change this to constant. Type 10 in scale and detail. Add mix color nodes and plug color of sprinkle texture to be input. Set to linear light. Change the factor to 1. Copy this color ramp, adjust value slightly. And add math node set to subtract. Now add a color ramp in front of this linear light and plug the color to the value. Now let's check the preview. You should see a hole in the center of the noise texture like this. This is gonna be our outline. Press Ctrl J to make a new frame. And let's just call them outline. Okay, let's move the preview back to the mix shader. Add hue, saturation nodes in front of color ramp. And add the mix color node here. Replace this node to here, A to B, and plug the color of color ramp to A. If you use node wrangler, hold shift and drag with mouse 3, then you can join them. Finally, plug subtract to factor and change blending mode to multiply. When you increase the values, you can see the edges of the clouds getting darker. You can also change the hue values or saturation of the outline. But for better visibility, let's create a sky background behind the cloud object. Super quickly, with a plan and something sky-like shader, the outline is now more visible. If I play with this color ramp here, hue, values or other color ramp, I can control the outline procedurally. Now let's add another procedural detail. This is gonna be our last step in this video. Shift A, texture coordinate, go to viewport, shift A and add an empty object. An empty object is an object with no geometry, and we are going to use this object in our shader. Set the object target to this empty object, add gradient texture, set to sprinkle, plug object to vector, Ctrl Shift click. Now when you move the empty object, it looks like a spear is moving in our clouds. If you add a mix color node here, and plug color to vector, it looks like this. If you change the color, you can use it like a brush to control only certain area of the texture. We'll call this Extra Light, since Lightning Boy Studios named this so. This trick is super handy, especially for 2D artists. It's like using a brush to add detail to specific area, way more like a texture painting. You can easily move things around to add any detail you want. We've taken full advantages of this technique and you'll see it in another tutorial we'll be uploading in the future. In this tutorial, we will show you how to upgrade this with the noise texture. Select this gradient texture, press Ctrl G to make a group. And now, toggle back and forth between the two by pressing tab. In this group, add the noise texture and Ctrl T to mapping. Color ramp here 
and change the scale and detail to 10. And here's the thing, if you increase the distortion, now it turns into a real distal texture and we are going to mix it up. Increase the roughness and add mix color node. Plug color of the gradient to B and set to linear light, vector is 1. And now if you change values once again, the texture looks like a painting. You can add extra color here, and it looks more realistic. And don't forget, plug the results of the mixed nodes to color of the output. Now press tab to exit, and let's see how it works. We can change the color of this extra light, and the really cool thing is, we can duplicate this. Ctrl C and Ctrl V will duplicate a group, meaning that they are linked together. If you change nodes inside the group, the other group you duplicated will also be changed. Copy the empty object and set it as the new object target. Move it around a bit. Now you can change the colors in the mixed color node, and you can also change the blending mode to play around with it. Now it's done. We can adjust the every values or colors to get the clouds we want. In the next video, we'll make these clouds more controllable. Adjust their shape, contrast, and change details outside of the shader node editor. We can use the same technique to make the sky more artistic. And yes, even add motion blur. We'll return shortly, but please subscribe and hit the like button. This is one from Studio Wearable.